The next speaker is Mark Belden. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners, and um, county manager. Um, my name is Mark Belden. I'm speaking about OB80, which is, seems to be the topic of the day. I live in District 1 in Heritage Oaks that borders Mr. Collins' land on the west side. I've lived in Heritage Oaks for 20 years and in Cobb County for 31. I am against this proposed settlement of the lawsuit filed by Columbia and Mr. Collins versus Cobb County. Uh, we are appreciative of, of your unanimous denial of Columbia's application last May. I wanted to point out some things, though. If the commission votes to accept this mediated settlement, the following precedents will be established for our area as well as all of Cobb County. Converting Mr. Collins' land from R20 to NAC is not in compliance with both the 2030 land use plan and the draft version of the 2040 plan. Uh, this particular intersection of Dallas Highway at Garrison Commons is explicitly called out as a text amendment in the 2030 plan as the end of a commercial node. Uh, Mr. Collins' land is 24 acres surrounded on three sides by established residential subdivisions bordered by Garrison Commons Drive. Two previous one, District 1 commissioners inserted the language to protect the Garrison Ridge and Zachary Wood subdivisions and Mud Creek. The language was inserted as a step down in intensity from the Lowe's and public centers. In April, staff comments on, on Z98 were clear. Quote, Cobb County has been very consistent and careful with rezoning actions on Dallas Highway to limit commercial development to defined nodes. So why is the current Taco Mac NRC on only one side of the Collins property being used as a reference point to justify this change from R20? Garrison Commons is a two-lane curved entry road from Garrison Ridge into Garrison Ridge and Zachary Wood subdivisions. It's not an arterial road, and the intersection with Dallas Highway is not a commercial node. The fact that there is a traffic signal there does not make it a commercial node, nor justify new commercial development next to it. Garrison Commons was actually the result of an easement agreement in 1995 between Mr. Collins and John Whelan Holmes, who was the previous owner of the Lowe's land. This road gave Mr. Collins more direct access to Dallas Highway from his driveway and more direct access for the Zachary Wood subdivision. Rezoning his land would mean that the county is abandoning the widely accepted concept of only putting commercial developments at true established commercial nodes. This concept has long been followed in West Cobb, and if abandoned, every commercial developer now has a reason to pursue new retail centers at non-commercial nodes. There are four residential parcels, all that are connected directly across Dallas Highway from Mr. Collins' land. If this mediated settlement is accepted, what is stopping from one or all four of these homeowners from selling out to a developer for rezoning to commercial? These four homeowners could sue the county in a heartbeat and based on the fact that the BOC overrode the land use plan directly across Dallas Highway from them. Then anyone can likely see the domino effect westward on Dallas Highway as other residential owners sell out to commercial developers. What I'm describing is not speculation. This is exactly what happened in East Cobb in the late 80s and early 90s. A large majority of West Cobb homeowners that I know decided to live out here to escape the sprawl and congestion. We've heard recently that Mr. Collins has indeed approached more than once to sell his property for residential development in the past three years. For some reason, he chose not to move forward. There is ample U.S. and Georgia Supreme Court case law supporting the county's legal position in zoning cases. The citizens of Cobb deserve their rights to be defended in zoning challenges to the established land use plan. Mr. Collins, Columbia, and their attorney have the burden to show by clear and convincing evidence that the existing R20 zoning causes them a detriment or a taking and is not substantially related to the public health and safety and welfare. The county does not have this burden, so a settlement makes little sense and only encourages more lawsuits. I respectfully ask that all of you vote against this mediated settlement next Tuesday and send it back to the trial judge. Thank you.